It is said, it's impossible to be sure of anything but death and taxes. No amount of trickery will stop the inevitability of death. Death is the inescapable endpoint of life. And this is as true for species as it is for individuals. Estimates suggest 99.99% of all the species that have ever lived are now extinct. All species that exist today, including human beings, will invariably go extinct at some point. But what factors make one species more or less vulnerable to extinction? The rate of extinction varies between different groups of animals and over time. So clearly, not all species are equally susceptible. Scientists have done a great job of documenting extinction, but determining the processes that cause extinction has proved a little bit more difficult. Now the question arises, who is more vulnerable to extinction? If we look at modern examples, some tipping points that lead to the extinction of a species become obvious. Reduced population size is one such factor. As the number of individuals of a species dwindles, it can lead to reduced genetic diversity and greater susceptibility to random catastrophic events. If the remaining population of a species is small enough, a single forest fire or even random variations in sex ratios could ultimately lead to extinction. Extinctions that have occurred in recent past receive a great deal of attention. For example, the dodo, thylacine, or passenger pigeon. But the vast majority of extinctions happened well before the appearance of humans. The fossil record is thus the primary source of data on extinction. When paleontologists consider fossils in the context of what we know about past environments, a clearer picture of what causes the extinction of species starts to emerge. To date, the likelihood of extinction of a species has been linked to a number of factors. We certainly know that changes in temperature are one important element. Almost every major rise or fall in global temperatures in Earth's history has resulted in the extinction of a swath of different organisms. The size of a geographic area a species occupies is also crucial. Species that are broadly distributed are less likely to go extinct than those that occupy a small area or whose habitat is disjointed. Some proportion of species go extinct regardless of any major environmental or biological upheaval. This is called the background extinction rate. Because paleontologists tend to focus on mass extinctions, background extinction rates are poorly defined. How much or how little this rate fluctuates isn't well understood. And in total, most extinctions probably fall into this category. Another problem is determining how important changing biological interactions are in explaining extinction. For instance, extinction of a species may occur when the abundance of a predator or a competitor increases or when a crucial prey species goes extinct. The fossil record, however, rarely captured this kind of information. Even the number of species that have gone extinct can be an enigma. We know very little about the current or past biodiversity of microorganisms such as bacteria or archaea let alone anything about patterns of extinction for these groups. The following categories of species are vulnerable to extinction. Species that only occur in threatened habitat types. Species that are economically valuable to humans. Species that do not have any or much experience of disturbance. Species that have evolved in isolation within a limited community without human contact. Specialist species, species that depend on unreliable resources, species requiring large home ranges, and at the end, species that have declining population. Now, a journalist species is able to thrive in wide variety of environmental conditions and can make use of a variety of different resources, for example, a heterotroph with a varied diet. Whereas a specialist species can thrive only in a narrow range of environmental conditions or has a very limited diet. Koalas and tiger salamanders are examples of specialist species, while raccoons and mice 
are examples of journalist species. Short-lived species, species with a low adult survival rate, species with a low genetic variability, species with a low intrinsic growth rate, species with very variable population size, species that lack long distance dispersal mechanisms, species that form aggregations either permanent or temporary, migratory species, species feeding at a high trophic level, could also be vulnerable to extinction. Now let's wrap up this conversation. There are three factors which are most important or you can say most critical in influencing species abundance. These factors are geographic range, habitat specificity and population size. Now if you see geographic range is divided into either large or small. Habitat specificity is divided into broad and narrow. Now let's compare them with large population size which is dominant at least somewhere. Also take small population size which is not dominant in any of the places. In all these categories you can see that only the number one which has large geographic range and broad habitat specificity that category is not considered rare and it is locally abundant in several habitats over large range all other categories whether they have large geographic range or small geographic range they have narrow habitat specificity and in case of small geographic range broad or narrow habitat specificity, large population or small population, they are all considered to be rare. Which means that they are ultimately vulnerable to extinction. Geographic range describes the spatial area where a species is found. Perhaps the biggest mistake we could make when it comes to assessing and explaining extinction would be to take a one-size-fits-all approach. The vulnerability of any one species to extinction varies over time and different biological groups respond differently to environmental changes. While major changes in global climate have led to the extinction in some biological groups, the same events have ultimately led to the appearance of many new species in others. So, how vulnerable any one species is to the extinction due to human activities or the associated climate change remains sometimes an open question. It is clear that the current rate of extinction is rising well above anything that could be called background level and is on the track to be the next mass extinction. The question of how vulnerable any one species, including our own, may be to extinction is therefore one scientists want to answer quickly if we are to have any chance any chance of conserving future biodiversity.